I would like to bring this school committee to order and ask all of you to join me for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, I welcome everybody who's in attendance tonight and certainly welcome our viewers on television. And our first item on the agenda is uh, to receive any comments. Is there anybody attending tonight's meeting who isn't already on the agenda who would like to speak to the school committee? Please come down forward and identify yourself. I think one of these young ladies is Brooke. And the other one is? Julian. Julian and Brooke. Good evening, welcome. Oh, thank you. Oh, there we go, hi. Okay, so we are a part of a nonprofit organization called 351, and currently throughout the Plymouth Public Schools District, we are running a Cradles to Crayons charity clothing drive um, through March 26th to April 6th. And we would like to know if we could get a uh, emailing spot in um, the Voyager or a coordinated call through Plymouth Public Schools, like a snow day call, tell informing like family and parents about um, our drive. So tell us something get. a little bit more about the drive and uh, repeat the dates. Okay, um, the drive off use the drive is. Accepting gently used clothing and shoes for Cradles of Crayons, a nonprofit organization in Boston that helps over 1.2 million kids throughout Massachusetts get the clothes and items that they need yearly. And um, the drive dates are March 26th to April 6th. You guys can all, do you want to pass it? Okay. We have uh, flyers for all of you guys. Um, but we've emailed flyers to the schools that we are running and hosting the drive at. Um, hopefully they'll make it out soon, but we, we don't know if all the you know, flyers can be printed out or if they can be handed out to families and they would know about it. So we're just hoping to get as many do donations we can as possible. So, yeah. So, Brooke, if, uh, if uh, all call went out, and many, many, many people brought garments to school, where would they put them? So we have, I actually was just giving Sonia boxes. We have huge boxes that my mother got from work, work at. Okay. Yes. So. Yeah. We have two ambassadors, so one from north and one from south. Brooke is from north, and then Sonia's from south, and I am an alumni that did it my eighth grade year, and now I'm a tenth grader, and I work with the organization to help these kids conduct their service because it's overwhelming but it's also really fun so I work to help them and these happen to be my two amazing ladies that I get to help this year. Um, so we have giant boxes that are from Tufts Medical Center. They housed um, equipment before so they're, they're huge and they are going to be going in the main offices of schools and when they overflow we have a, a we have constant coordination with principals throughout the district um, and if their boxes get full we come they're going to be lined with trash we come with the trash bag we pick them up we bring them back and we have a we have sorting dates through our own to go to cradles to crayons be sorted dr maestas i think you're going to get a lot of clothes mm -hmm. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you thank you uh we will definitely commit to uh, getting your information into the Voyager Express on Fridays. It'll be on, it'll be, we'll put it in there on Fridays until the end. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And then uh, Dr. Campbell is the voice of the Plymouth Public Schools. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get him to do an all call oh, so that people can uh, get information. Do you and then, electronically uh, text? Do we have it electronically? Um, yeah, we have it on. Yes, we do. Great. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Harbert's here from the newspaper, so maybe he might want to grab you after. I don't know if he'd be interested in doing that, but I think if you get him to say something in the newspaper, you know, write something up, it, it, yeah. I think the, the, the scope is going to be that much wider. Mm -hmm. We also, sorry, we also had um, Plymouth North film a video for us. Oh, um, so uh, the So it's on Vimo and hopefully it will be on the front page of Plymouth Public Schools next week. Okay. So the thing is that, that I want the school committee to understand is that you were selected 
back when you were in middle school mm -hmm. as a building leader. There were two from every school, middle school, that got selected to go to Boston to meet with leaders from around the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. Project 350, it's 351, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. so yes. it's, Three? so there's 351 towns in Massachusetts right. and it's, Mostly one from every town, but like Boston, there's like seven, so it depends on how big the town is. And you know what is really impressive to me is that you are long gone past your high school year, uh, your, your middle school years, and you're coming as alumni to help. Thank you. That means that you have kept that leadership quality mm -hmm. and you're continuing to, to go down that road, which we're very, very happy mm -hmm. to see that. And we're extremely happy that you're helping others, which is really the pinnacle of what we need in our society thank you we need that and we're really just just so pleased that you're uh you're both of you here are, are really making this happen mm -hmm. and uh, helping cradles to crayon to achieve their goal of getting people uh, that need clothes their their the, what they need you know mm -hmm. so that's just amazing let me see if committee members have any questions or comments Great. I think we're already thinking about what's on our closets. <laughs> yeah. I know that's what I'm doing. Awesome. You know, so. Great. Thank you very much, and I Thank hope you. it goes really well. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, uh, our student representatives are here tonight, uh, and we'll start with North. Thank you. The Plymouth Public Schools Guidance Department will be offering the College Admission Seminar on Thursday, March 22nd at 6.30 p.m. The seminar will be held at Plymouth North High School. The seminar is open to all grade levels and their parents and will offer information on how guidance actively assists in the college search and application process. In addition, we will host a panel of admission representatives from two-year, two-year, four-year public and four-year private institutions to offer different perspectives, information, insights, tips, available opportunities, for all academic post-secondary paths. The Plymouth Public Schools Guidance Department will also be offering a Paying the College Bill on Tuesday, April 2nd from 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Plymouth North Performing Arts Center. MCAS ELA Grade 10 testing will be held on Tuesday, March 27th through Thursday, March 29th. Join Mrs. Fair and Mrs. Raymond on Thursday, March 29th at 6 p.m in room 310 to learn more about the surface learning opportunities for April and June of 2019. There will be an informational meeting on Tuesday, March 20th at 6 p.m. in the lecture hall for those interested in learning more about traveling to Iceland in 2019. Congratulations to the cast, crew, and all involved in the amazing drama production of Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Thank you for dedicating so much of your time into making this show a huge success. Class of 2018 Mayfest t-shirts will be on sale during the month of March. The shirts can be purchased for $20 with a check or money order made payable to PNHS SAF. Marks close on Friday, April 6th. We encourage students and families to check Aspen for the most up-to-date academic standings. Any questions, please call the guidance office or the teachers directly. Plymouth North had another great year at DECA States. There were over 2,800 competitors from high schools all over the state. We had 83 competitors, 7 freshmen, 20 sophomores, 36 juniors, and 20 seniors. 32 competitors made it in the top 10 by winning a medallion. In addition, Bailey McDonald and Abby Bumpus entrepreneurship team, Julie Osborne, Juliana Bard hospitality operation, Research Project, Plymouth Plantation, and Abby Villano and Taylor Burns Finance <coughs> um, Business Plan all clocked out at 11th place. The majority of the categories had 38 to 40 competitors. 18 students have earned the right to compete at internationals in Atlanta April 20th to April 25th. We are very proud of our students' commitment um, to excellence and their behavior representative Plymouth North with seriousness to the competition. Students advancing to DECA's international competition in Atlanta, Georgia are Montgomery Gray, first place overall trophy, first place finance test, third place medallion role play, first place virtual business accounting competition, John Jonathan Liskoff, personal financial literacy, second place trophy, overall um, first place medallion, 
Jocelyn Bailey and Taylor Shaughnessy, third place trophy, creative marketing project, children's allergies. Joshua Brown, financial consulting event, third place trophy. Kyle, Kylie Cheeseman and Alexander, Alexander Gilmore, fourth place trophy, creative marketing project, the Blake Planetarium. Grace Stanford and Sadie Thompson, fourth place trophy, community service project, the Eagle's Nest. Sydney Gorman and, and Molly Hogan, fourth place trophy, financial operations research event, Santander Bank. Michael Mitchell, fourth place trophy, food marketing, first place medallion role play. Kaylee Reardon, Reardon um, principles of business administration, fourth place overall. Kyle Marcotte, fourth place overall trophy, restaurant and food service management. Emma Healy, fourth place overall trophy, retail marketing. Elizabeth Levis, fifth place trophy overall, automotive services marketing. Corinne Freitas and Maddie Langley, school-based enterprise, gold level recertification. Also honored on stage, Hannah Gleason, apparel and, express, and accessories, third place medallion role play. Alexander, Alexandra Antonino, apparel and, and accessories, eighth place. Jacob O'Brien, Douglas Harvey, and Anthony Keefe, business operations research, seventh place, Safford Hill. Samantha Larson and Brie Farrell, buying and merchandising team decision making, ninth place. Brooke Peterson, Food Marketing, 7th place. Christina Lennon, Human Resources Management, 1st place medallion, 10th place overall. Gianna Delano and Ruby, Nor Ruby Nor Norris, um, Learn and Earn Project, 6th place Al Ala Mode Fashion Show. Jerry Ann Newton, Marketing Communication Series, 8th place. Cassie Litfay, Restaurant and Food Service Mar Management, 3rd place medallion, 7th place overall. Um, Matt Scharf, an entrepreneur in sports and entertainment, um, third place role play. And congratulations to all who competed. All sports start today after school. Plymouth North sent 36 students from Allied Health, Engineering, and Facilities Management to participate in 2018 Skills USA District Competition held at Greater New Bedford Vocational Technical School. Skills recognizes the gold and silver bronze medal winners in each category. We are so proud of all of our students that competed in the following students that won medals in their trade areas. Gold medal health knowledge, Gabriela D. Oliverio. Gold medal health knowledge, Rachel Peterson. Gold medal health knowledge, Hope Mannion. Gold medal health knowledge, Brenna Tobin. Bronze medal nursing assistance, Lily Serenka. Silver medal, Urban Search and, Re and Rescue, Jeffrey Godden. Silver medal, Urban Search and Rescue, Brendan Clark. Gold medal, Metal and Carpentry, Ryan Brown. Gold medal in Masonry, um, Sean Hart. Gold medal in Masonry, Colin Bro. Gold, bronze medal in Masonry, Scott Peterson. Congratulations to all who competed. Yeah, great report. Great report. A lot of information. Thank you. Isabella. Good afternoon. I'm going to start that um, our spring sports started today. All students are reminded that they should have an updated physical on file and they should have completed their registration online at Family ID. And I want to congratulate the Plymouth South Theater Guild for their two amazing performances of Our Town, which was held in our new Black Box Theater, which is a really more intimate um, type of show. And our annual Mr. Puma South event is going to be tomorrow at 6.30, excuse me. And um, the event features eight of our South seniors that compete in a variety of pageant categories to be crowned the 2018 Mr. Puma South. All the proceeds of um, the event will go to a charity of the winner's choice. Our rescheduled freshman, sophomore, honor success breakfast from last week will take place this week. Um, Wednesday at 7.45 in the Performing Arts Center. Our student speaker will be Senior Sarah Leary, a National Honor Society student and marketing student. And the National School Walkout Day was unfortunately on a snow day, so that was postponed. Um, student leaders will be meeting with my principal, Mr. Hanna, this week to determine a new date. Uh, students will have a choice to walk out to remember those uh, who were affected and who lost their lives in the Parkland, Florida shooting, as well as many other before. 
The Plymouth South High School School Council will meet this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and the council will continue to focus on year one of the school improvements plans, goals, and objectives. Our all town band court, excuse me, the all town band concert is this Wednesday at Plymouth North beginning at 7. And our annual Credit for Life Fair will take place on April 10th at the Hotel 1620. Our community members involved in this fair will be meeting this Thursday at 9 a.m. for a planning session. Our college admissions seminar will take place on Thursday at Plymouth North beginning at 6.30 p.m. All parents and students are welcome to come regardless of age. And grade 10 will take their MCAS uh, next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. In addition, South will pilot the English MCAS, MCAS 2.0, the next generation of online MCAS testing later this semester, along with the biology MCAS 2.0. Want to congratulate our Skills USA and DECA students for their successful competitions at the Skills USA District and DECA State competitions last week. Both Skills USA and DECA brought home many awards as students in both groups will be moving on to the next level of competition. This Saturday, the Panther Booster Club will host its annual spring dinner dance at the Pine Hills Pavilion. Cost for the event is $30 and all funds raised will go towards scholarship for select senior student athletes. I also wanted to congratulate the Plymouth South Dance Team on finishing second at the New England Regional Competition last week. This is the highest award that our dance team has won since it started. And I'd also like to congratulate the boys ice hockey team, coaches, managers, and parents as they won the Division II State Championship versus Stoneham at the TD Garden Sunday with a 4-3 overtime win. MIA officials stated that this is one of the largest crowds they have seen at the state finals, thanks to North and South for coming together for that. And um, we wanted to thank all the Plymouth residents and support and teachers that came out to support our team. It was a really, really awesome experience, and um, Coach Mike McCosh gave the game puck to the Stoneham coach to present to the parents of Stoneham's James Luidi, who tragically passed away on November 29th. Um, he was a sophomore on the Stoneham ice hockey team, which was a really appreciated class act by um, our head coach, Micah McCosh. <coughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, I, I concur, I was at the game yesterday. I, I, I had to go to the bathroom, I didn't even leave the shoe. <laughs> it was so awesome. It was, it was awesome. Thank you for that report. Yeah, no problem. Next item on our agenda is uh, old business. Uh, is there any updates on all the business? Uh, committee members, with anything you bring up on new business? We're ready for the superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. I have a few items to report. I uh, have to agree with Isabella that the uh, hockey game was uh, outstanding, and I'd also like to highlight uh, Adri um, Liliana Alvarez and her uh, singing with the national anthem. That was just uh, outstanding. She did a fantastic job, and uh, what a great venue for, for her to be in and, and to represent Plymouth. And just as Isabella did identify, uh, it was a, a, a great opportunity for Plymouth South, but a, a huge opportunity for Plymouth to be represented at mm -hmm. the Garden. So congratulations to South and congratulations to Plymouth. It was a great, uh, a great opportunity. Um, the walkouts that were slated for last week will be rescheduled. I think uh, those are those um, opportunities are, are going to be going to be working with your principals to make sure those can happen. And uh, the next item I have tonight is uh, right now our last day of schools on June 22nd. Unfortunately, we're looking at weather on Wednesday night, uh, which, as I look at it, it seems to be increasing in likelihood that we'll get more than five inches of snow. But that's something that we'll have to see. Um, Unfortunately, my life is stuck around the weather channel and uh, these other weather <laughs> and from the bits and pieces that I get, and it's just uh, somewhat discouraging that we've had so much weather um, this year. Um, this month. This, this month, yeah, in March. Um, last week we had the, a number of really great opportunities here in the district. I think uh, the first one was the planetarium um, reopening and, and, and the grand opening for that, and then the show that if you didn't have a chance to see it, you need to see the capabilities of planetarium. We, you did see a preview of it earlier um, this summer, but it is absolutely fantastic. The quality, the opportunities that our students and staff will have by uh, 
having our students take part in that. You can get a great opportunity to see that. We had two different shows that were um, presented last week and they were both outstanding. Um, congratulations to Allison uh, Reardon, our science coordinator, and Gary Coston, who really you know, put this package together to make it work and get it done and installed. Uh, it's just a fantastic opportunity for not only our students in Plymouth, but other students from this, this region that can come and, and participate and, and learn and uh, we can make a little bit of money along the way to upgrade that over time and we won't be in a position to wait 44 years to actually get an upgrade so. And the uh, adults will be able to come too. To absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not going to speak too much about this because I know Ms. Hunt is, uh, is going to want to speak to this but the Division Three MASC mm -hmm. meeting uh, was, mm -hmm. was well attended mm -hmm. over at Plymouth mm -hmm. South High School and, and uh, a lot of credit to Nancy and and Ms. Hunt for actually working with uh, the MASC staff work, members to actually get this thing pulled off. Barry Levy and the food, it was great. I know Patty was there. Um, I had to leave because we had a smart gun safety forum here at PCIS, which was well attended. We had about 75 people, somewhere around there, right? 50 yeah. to 70 around there? Wow. Yeah. Awesome. And um, it was well attended, a lot of questions, but the presentation was very well done, very awesome. engaging. Um, and it was really about gun safety, about how to, if you have a gun in your home, what do you do? How do you keep it safe? And what recommendations do you have? And they gave away gun locks at the end of the presentation. But it was very, very well done, very or well orchestrated, um, scripted. Um, the police chief was here, um, and he just, you know, I was with him yesterday, and he just said that that was so good. It was so well done, and he felt that that should be replicated. Um, to other communities and also every year we should do one here mm -hmm. in Plymouth. So we'll look at the possibility of doing that and the organization that uh, put it on is looking forward to coming back. Okay. And the last item I have to report on tonight is um, next Tuesday we have the robotics rally, elementary ro robotics rally and um, it's oh sorry it's tomorrow. <laughs> I, I think I thought today was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm losing track of Wait my time here. here. Um, so tomorrow is the uh, robotics challenge. There are two different levels. Level one is at 415 at North High School and level two is at 530. So if you want to um, go into North High, spend a few minutes, walk around and just see what our kids are doing around robotics at the elementary level, this would be a, a really good time to get a, a good taste of what they're up to. Great opportunity and once again Allison Reardon has a, a great deal to do with, with this and Julia Colby too. They've done a fantastic job of putting this on and, and rise and it is really at a level now that we've always um, hoped it would be and I think <laughs> that they've done a fantastic job getting it there so if you're around tomorrow come by swing around see the kids see the parents see some competition and uh, it should be good so with that Dr. Sorensen I'll turn it back to you okay any, any questions from committee members to Dr. Maestas following his report okay Retirements. Um, yes, we have four retirements to report tonight. Um, Deborah Cormier, a grade two teacher, 31 years from West Elementary School. Tom Heslin, a computer science instructor after 30 years at Plymouth South High School. Mark Kelleher, moderate special needs teacher and reading interventionist for 12 years um, at both middle schools. And Nancy Nicholas, a technology integration specialist from 11 years from Indian Brook. <coughs> On behalf of the Plymouth Public Schools, we wish to thank these individuals for their service and wish them a happy retirement. Thank you. Correspondence, Mr. Morgan? Uh, no correspondence this evening. Okay. Uh, our next item uh, is a um, presentation on, on a therapy dog, uh, Dr. Maestas. Yes. Um, this evening we have um, the school adjustment counselor from Plymouth Community Intermediate School who is in attendance along with Principal Palladino. Uh, to present information relative to the desire to um, have an, uh, an assistance dog at PCIS. As you know, we do have uh, an assistant dog that was at Nathaniel Morton. Um, the individual who actually presented to you here at school committee uh, transferred to Plymouth North High School and the dog tra transferred with her. So, um, you know, they do miss Beamer at Nathaniel Morton, but he's doing a fabulous job at North. Mm -hmm. um, but um, tonight we have a proposal uh, from Tracy Denell. Uh, Tracy has, has been with us for a long time, has taken on uh, 
the desire to um, take the responsibility of, of a dog coming into our school system. Just like the other uh, opportunity that we had with um, the dog that's at North, uh, when a dog enters into this program, the, the, the teacher who takes on the responsibility of the dog actually is the dog owner. Um, and, but they have to go through a stringent training program. Uh, and tonight, uh, they are here to, to discuss a little bit about the program, a little bit about the, about the dog and to get the, you know, some feedback from the school committee as to what your thoughts are about another therapy dog coming into a different level. We were at the elementary, we're at the high school. This will be the first therapy dog um, that we would have at the middle school level. So is, if Tracy and Brian want to come down and, and talk about this, that would be, uh, that'd be great. Good evening and welcome. Yes, as Dr. Maestra said, had said, uh, we have an opportunity to get a service dog uh, for PCIS. Um, Tracy, as Dr. Maestra has uh, told you guys, she's the um, adjustment counselor for the care program, and she'll probably talk a little bit about the care program, but it's a program, it's a district-wide program for students with emotional impairments, um, which I think is a perfect fit uh, for a therapy dog. Um, but uh, Tracy and I have met regarding this dog and the opportunities not only for this care program, but also the building, because there are kids, and you've heard me speak at school improvement plan uh, presentations, there are kids that could really uh, use a therapy dog during different parts of the day, uh, not just in the care program, but our PCIS community. So we're really excited for that opportunity. Uh, but I do want to let Tracy talk a little bit about the, you know, the process she's going to be going through and the type of dog we're getting, because uh, it's a lot of great information. We hope we can get the support of the school committee. Hi. Uh, so, as uh, Dr. Myers said, I've been the uh, care program adjustment counselor that for the original care program at the middle school. Um, I've been there 13 years. We started the care program, really proud of the care programs throughout all of the, um, the elementary, the middle, and the, the high school. But I actually started with the care program, and the, the care program, um, fortunately and unfortunately, has grown. Uh, it started as a program for 12 kids. We started with three kids, and now we're busting at the seams. Um, but it's still running very, very well. Uh, we have a lot of nice resources. We have great teachers, great support, great administrators. But we are getting more and more kids with emotional impairment, as I'm, I'm sure all of you are hearing, we're seeing in the news. Um, kids that are fe feeling disenfranchised, I think, is the biggest thing. And um, a lot of our kids come into the small setting and they feel very comfortable right away, but we also have a lot of kids that we have a very difficult time coming through the door. And, um, you know, I've been a clinician for 25 years and I have outside of here used animal therapy in the past, and it's been kind of a dream to think about being able to bring um, the compassion and the love of an animal into this setting and into the school for kids to feel um, welcomed in, to feel comfort of the animal. And you're not going to beat this organization. Um, I have a daughter in a wheelchair and I had the pleasure of actually having a needs dog already um, for as a service dog. So this was a working dog. Uh, and Zeta was with us for 11 years, and actually Beth Kane found out about the needs um, organization through knowing my dog. Um, Zeta was a, a working dog. This is going to be more of a comfort dog. So um, just to give you a little bit of information about how the dogs are trained, they're, they start at eight weeks old. They come into the needs organization. Um, they're well-bred. They're dogs that are bred, particularly right now, they are all labs. Um, they have had different dogs in the past, but they, they're breeding dogs that are, are specific, who have good temperaments, who are good with people. And um, so, so the majority of the dogs are, you know, already come in with good breeding and already have come from uh, adult, you know, their, their parental dogs have already had good natured um, temperaments. But so they start at eight weeks. These dogs go immediately into, right now they're doing the pup the prison pup program. I don't know if you guys are aware, but 100% um, of the puppies from needs are going into the prison pup program. So they're going one to one with a, a prisoner, living with the prisoner, training with the prisoner, needs trains with the prisoners all week long. Um, so they are um, um, taught to get along with lots of different types of people, um, and they're taught from eight weeks on, and, and they learn how to bond. 
um, and then they go home on the weekends to foster homes and they go out into the community. And so the foster families take them out into the community. They take them into all different situations. The dogs all have their vests on from very early on so they, they know they're working dogs and they go into malls and they go to Red Sox games and they go to all big settings so that they get used to big crowds. Um, and then at about a year, they're brought back to the organization and they go into a rigorous training um, to learn all of the, the skills that they'll need to be a service dog. Uh, so all the dogs are trained to be service dogs, but at some point they're looked at their personalities, which are more serious for the service for working with disabled people and which have more of the temperament for being more of the compassionate, um, the, the comfort dogs, which I, I, I call them comfort dogs because they really bring comfort to kids. And, and they're the dogs that you pet and you lay on top of and you snuggle and the working dogs are more of the working dogs. Um, so when, when they decide to break off, they are actually looking specifically for dogs that would be um, dogs that would go into schools, classrooms. Um, a lot of these dogs are going to churches, hospitals, um, settings like that as comfort dogs. So this specific dog, so I, um, Brian and I had spoken uh, we spoke about two years ago, but I am an animal person and I had three dogs. They will not put a dog, one of these dogs, into a home with three dogs. Um, and I lost two dogs and so this was a good time for me to think about doing this. And especially with my um, commitment to the care program, I just felt like I'm getting a little older, I don't know how much longer, but I really would like to bring an animal in for my, the, you know, the majority of the time that I'm hopefully going to still be here. So um, this was a good time. And I went through the application process. I went through an interview process. And uh, Brian had to say he was OK with it, that it was going to be a PCIS dog. So um, the important thing is, is that the dog is, is not my pet. It is actually a working dog. I couldn't get the dog if I wasn't presenting that this is where it's coming. Um, so it's going to be a working dog. Um, so obviously, it is going to be my dog. It'll come home with me. I will take care of the dog. Um, you know, I'll cover the, I'll take care of its vet bills, things like that. But um, the cost of training a dog, they say, is forty-two thousand um, dollars from start to finish. But they ask for the um, for us to to donate eight thousand um, and to raise that money. So um, I've already started that. We've posted on, they help us. They, they help a, a ton to, to help fundraise. Um, when my daughter, when we had to fundraise for my daughter, we, with family and friends, we raised it within about three days. Um, this is a little bit different. It, that was a little bit of a different need. But um, so at this point, we, you know, we, I've put things on the website. Um, and we've already talked about different ways that we can fundraise with the students. The Falcon Pride, has, I've had a meeting with Falcon Pride. The kids are psyched about the possibility of having a dog in the school, and they already have come up with a whole fundraising idea to raise money. So I think, um, I think it's exciting. I think community-wise, this dog's going to be in the community. Um, you know, I'd, I'd bring the dog here for all of you. So, you know, it's, it's not going to just be a PCIS dog, but I do, I do want it to be a PCIS dog. I want it to benefit all the kids at PCIS, not just the care program. It will be placed in the care program and it will benefit most of the, you know, my kids that I work with. Um, but we've talked about having it outside. Um, as you know, we have policemen outside. I thought maybe it would be nice to have the dog there too um, to really present a different balance of that. And I think for some kids that are resistant to coming to school or afraid to come to school to greet, have, be greeted by the dog, I, I just think it's a really neat idea. So those are, we've come up with different ideas. Um, reluctant readers, they mm -hmm. have showed research that um, kids that are reluctant to read out loud will read to the dog. Um, I'd love to utilize the dog for that kind of thing. Um, and we have other types of kids that are um, school refusal. Um, we have kids, I'm sure, in, in some of these other schools, you've got kids out in the car with their parents and won't walk in the, um, you know, I wouldn't mind if Brian gives me a call and says, hey, Tracy, can you bring the dog outside? So th those are, you know, really simple things but can do great things. Um, so I'm excited. Um, I have a long history of working with animals, and like I said, I've already had um, a service dog in my home. My family knows how to use a service dog. Um, and this specific dog, when they called me, they matched me pretty quickly, which was really cool. And they said, if, um, if they match me, could I do April vacation and go train? It's about an eight-day training. So I would go and train. I have to live up there a couple of days. They need to see that the dog bonds, um, specifically with me. Uh, it is a one caretaker, one dog uh, situation. Uh, and I'll be trained with the dog. Uh, and then um, 
and then we'll talk about transitioning the dog in here if, if you all approve of, of that. So that's the uh, situation. That's a very good report. The committee members with any other questions or comments? This is an information item. doesn't require our action, but. Uh, that's awesome. Yes. <clears throat> I, I mean, I think it's a great idea, and I know it was really successful. I know when I was even um, shopping for colleges with my son, the library at UNH has a dog you can check out for, <laughs> like, during test time yeah. or when the high-stress times for mm -hmm. the college students now, they said you can, I, I'm sure you can't bring them to your dorm, right. but <laughs> they do have that kind of process, so I think that it's great. I mean, if... These kids are going to start seeing these more and more in every stage of your your mm -hmm. life. And um, I know I've been up at Children's Hospital a lot, too, and, and they've been talking a lot about animal therapy. And I, I just, I mean, I think it's a great idea. I know that the cost is a lot, but I'm sure that, I'm sure that the students, if they want it bad, they're going to help you get that. I can, I can add to that. I flew out in February and at a Providence, and they had service dogs throughout the airport where people, before they get in their flights, they're spending time with the dog. So I, I agree with you. I think it's, you know, any high-stress area, you're going to see you're going to see these animals because it's proven to help. Yep. Yeah, I'm a mental health practitioner, and we yes. have them in our offices. In two of our offices, we have dogs. Yeah. Makes a huge difference, and I've used them. I mean, not as professionally as this, but I've used them for um, kids that I worked in a clinic and kids that wouldn't talk to me. I brought the hamster in that my kid just got, just and and it made a hu huge difference in opening up a child with trauma or or something like that. So, um, and we have a great more asset more kids. for the care program, but I think there's other programs in this mm -hmm. building too that yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. we talked about too. Is is, yeah. is a, a reward for a behavior plan? You get to spend X amount of time with the dog, and and what's nice about and, uh, Trace, when we met, uh, the, the dog, if he sees behaviors, will retreat and go into his pen. So it's kind of a, that makes the student aware that, okay, what I'm doing isn't, you know, that it's affecting mm -hmm. the dog. The dog will go in its pen and, you know, yeah. so it's, I mean, it's, it's good. Great. Dr. Mayasis. I need one for central office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I heard somebody say that, Nancy. Day, <laughs> Especially about the heydays when the <laughs> Mr. Begley. I, I love the idea. I liked it when we got Beamer a few years ago, and we, we were all a little apprehensive at the mm -hmm. time because it was the first one, but uh, talk about a screaming success. I mean, that was perfect. Yeah. And I know we have Goldens, my family, we have yeah. Goldens. And uh, a few years ago, we had the opportunity to take one of our Goldens to a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And when you see the effect that they have on people, this is great. Yeah. We need more. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, well, I need that. <laughs> it really just it, it lightens the air of everything. I think it, I I keep thinking it's just comfort, you know, for kiddos that are reluctant to come to school. And all kids nowadays are so much more stressed out. I think, um, and I think just to see the dog, you see their faces light up. Yeah. Um, the kids that are at, at Falcon Pride were just beside themselves to have a dog in the school and you know and and they know that the kid, the dog's going to be primarily with me and and the other thing that that I thought was neat is um one of the things that I thought is is actually when it when and if I go into another classroom or I go to another um, part of the building with the dog to bring one of my students yeah mm. and and engage one of the care kids that isn't out very much with the dog mm -hmm. it's a way to also engage those kids that may feel like kind of outsiders so it's it's almost endless what we could do and um and i'm very excited it's a nice opportunity for me and um and, and to to have all sorts of different ideas and and to just engage in the and i just think it's a it will be like beamer has really become mm -hmm. the plymouth school dog yeah. he's fabulous i saw him tonight he's just the best and uh, i used him this summer i worked in the summer program and i used him with the kids this summer uh and he's just Great, and so I think that this he, this dog can be present at lots of different things as well. Okay. So. Any, any other questions or guess? Mm -hmm. So you get trained in uh, over April vacation, and then when does it get to come home with you? Well, I I would I mean he can come well. So as long as I pass, mm -hmm. um, which I hope to. Um, and they, I mean, actually, when my daughter was there, she passed. Um, but there was a, a gentleman who was rough with the dog, mm -hmm. and they sent him home. So, I mean, there are people who fail the dogs. Uh, and the dog went with a, another lovely woman with MS. Um, we saw at the graduation. So the dog got a wonderful home. But they really do want to make sure that the dog is happy and that you know what you're doing with the dog and you're going to give the dog a nice home. 
Um, and I, you know, I had to get references and things like that. So um, I, he, they, he will come home with me. So I'll train over April vacation. He'll come home with me over the weekend, mm -hmm. and then I go back. Um, and train for a couple more days. So they do want to see that everything went well and see that the dog is healthy and happy. When, and I think also Beth has, I've talked to Beth, and um, she said they do check on his weight, <coughs> which I think is interesting. Um, so they do check on you and make sure that you're taking care of that dog all along. Burgess. Yeah. I was just wondering, in, so summer's coming. Yes. So what happens with the dog in the summer? So if I'm not working, the dog will come home with me, but I already talked to Beth. Um, I'm not going to work in the summer school program, but I told her that I would love to bring the dog, you know, and use the dog. Um, I just, I have a 15-year-old. It's his last year home without a license, so I feel like he needs me at home this summer. Um, and so I'm just choosing, uh, forevermore I'll probably work in the summer program because I loved it. But um, I, I would love to, you know, if there are different things that I could bring him to. And, you know, I even thought of, again, maybe I can bring him to nursing homes or other things and, yeah. and, and keep him active. And, just to keep yeah. him active yeah. is what I'm thinking. Exactly. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what, yeah. Keep them working. I love all that. Maybe the, um, <laughs> the, the younger kids, I heard was a rough year last year with the younger school, summer school. I, the middle school program was, the was ones, yeah. ran great. But, I mean, maybe one day a week or something I could come in. I'd be happy to do any of that kind of stuff. Mr. Love Mr. it. Sally. Oh, yeah. What, do you know what kind of dog you will have? That's Is it him. a lab? It's, it's him? Okay. That's him. I have, um, a, I have a chocolate lab, and uh, I'm, I'm, I can see um, yeah. the, the kind of special thing about a lab all dogs I love all dogs but labs are just they so, are. they're so bright and they, I have three they children love children yes. mm -hmm. they, he thinks he's my fourth <laughs> yeah so for right? sure they're, they're like and very intuitive children too. and animal yep. and dog suits um, when they matched me with this one they said that they were presenting and they um, they said what's the worst thing that can happen because they wanted to know and I said well I will say that the care program you know it sometimes has a bad rap that it has real behavioral kids but uh, in the the worst sometimes is yelling, maybe some swearing. We're really lucky. We have, we, we, we're very lucky, and we haven't had a lot of more aggressive than that. But it's possible. And that's when she said, the minute that you see that happening, there's a kennel. They have to have a kennel in my office. And you say, kennel up, and he goes right there. So he's safe. And I said, absolutely, that's not too. And that's going to be one of his, his um, commands. But she said, um, she said she said to the group, she said that sometimes kids are grumpy, and that's true. Some of my kids come in grumpy, whatever, you know. And she said that, um, you know who I'm talking about. And uh, so she said she said that, and they said, Ansel, the dog's Ansel. Because apparently you look at him, and you're grumpy or whatever, and he just goes crazy happy and mm. wags his tail, and you can't stay grumpy. So they said, they picked him when she said she has some grumpy kids. So they, you know, so Does his he have personality. Name? Ansel. 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 Ansel? Ansel? Oh. An like Ansel Adams. Yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, that, that's, that's really exciting. Right. Good luck with your training. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for support. And so certainly bring Thank us back information. Much. All right. I'll bring him to visit. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Okay, we have one job description to adopt tonight. Okay, we have We have one, a 7.1. Just the end of your audit. Audit. Yeah. Oh, the audit. We're Did out I pass order. Order? We're out of order. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Where is it? It's right above the seven point one. No. Oh, you might. You might have. Right did you print that out beforehand, Jim? Audit seven one. See it? Oh yeah, you don't have, don't it. have it. You have a different one. one. Really? Yeah, okay, so look at your. It's missing it. Oh, yeah. look at that. What are we missing? The audit. You probably printed that out before yeah. the final. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, every, every year, as the school committee knows, we are obligated to uh, complete a very extensive financial report, which details how we spend the district's money, grant funds, uh, revolving funds, etc. As part of that requirement, the Department of Elementary uh, and Secondary Education requires us to have an audit to verify that we followed uh, all compliant. We were in compliant with all. DESE requirements, regulations, how we completed the report, and that we didn't make any mistakes uh, on the report. So what you have is a copy of uh, the report. Uh, we, we always get it audited in the fall, but it takes a period of time before we get the report. And you have a copy of the report for the uh, year ending 2017, which is the last year we've, uh, we've completed. 
and um, I'm very proud to say that we have no findings in the report this year, and um, we're found to be totally in compliant, and that is honestly a reflection on the staff that I work with who uh, put this report together and, and helped me do all that. So um, we're, we're pleased with that report. Is that an action item? Uh, just went off to the next Info. item. Info. Info. Okay, thanks. But the job description. All right, thank you for that. Any questions on the audit? Okay, thank you. And now we have uh, one job description. Um, yes, this is um, this is our final teacher job description. And in my years in Plymouth um, College and career technical education has many had many titles. We've been CVTE, VTE. C I can't even keep it straight anymore. But the Department of Ed has changed it again to CCTE, College and Career Technical Education Teacher. Um, I said I'm gonna have a test for all the tech mm -hmm. teachers. I told them. Um, but this we did update a great deal um, from the original one in 1995. What you'll notice that's different from the teacher um, job description was really on job goals number two because a requirement of the state is to that we need to prepare our students in our vocational program for employability skills. Um, number four is based on the shop environment and number 11 is a big piece based on hazards and things of that nature because safety is a major priority. Um, and also number 13 um, because we really try to promote co-op opportunities for our students at collaboration. It's imperative that the teachers also communicate with the co-op coordinator and the job placement for the kids. So those are some of the, the miniature differences from the regular teacher job description and all other changes you've shared we've made. Okay, thank you. Questions uh, or a motion? Ms. Badger. Um, I just have two quick little, so on 15 and 20, you start the sentence with two, but all the others you have like an action word. So yep. I mean, I don't know if we, it's just a little nitpicky, but if we just want to start it with maintain and then yep. 20 participate. Yep, absolutely. Yep. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Any motions? Ms. Hunt? Um, I move that the um, job description for the CCTE teacher be accepted and approved as presented. Is there a second? Or with, her, with Ms. Badger's with her correction. Uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Burgess is the second. Any questions on the motion? Okay, it's time to vote for that motion. And everybody has voted in favor. Thank you. PYDC, we have minutes from the 9th, I'm being told. Oh, PYDC. Yep. We do. It's high water, too. So everybody did get the minutes from PYDC? Can you report? Oh, no, it's good. Okay. Huh? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there's a, an opioid um, forum coming up on March, on this coming Saturday, March 24th, from 10 to 1 at the library. And Gary is one of the presenters, that's great. <laughs> and, um, but they're also having Judge Mary O'Sullivan Smith, who was a, and a probation officer, Janet McFarlane, both from the Plymouth Juvenile Court. And uh, from recovery, they've got uh, Katie Marini, who's vice president of the board of directors of the Plymouth Recovery Center, and Shannon Mountain Ray, who's a licensed social worker from Wareham Pediatrics. So it should be a good program. Uh, you do need to uh, sign up online, though. So uh, I think they have something for lunch or something. So that that's why why you need to to do that. But I think it will be a good take, 10 to 1 at Plymouth Public Library Saturday. And um, they had something else there that was very interesting to me. Uh, but the, it's not all presented. And it was some of the students at South High School, one of the classes who, who was, um, were concerned about vaping. And uh, there was a presentation, but it, the, the kids want to work a little more and clean it up a little more. But it was a pretty good presentation, and it even had the resources listed from uh, where they got their information. But um, it, vaping is becoming um, quite prevalent, mm -hmm. and even in the schools, in the middle school and high school. And there's all kinds of things like 
on your hooded sweatshirts, the little things, they can vape through that. You can mm -hmm. use a thumb drive. You can, there's pen, pens, all kinds of things. So parents and people aren't even aware because you don't see the smoke that's, that's with the cigarette. It just stops. So um, I think it's something that we really should uh, move forward and, and be really aware of because they end up with popcorn lungs and, what 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 it's saying to me is with with the opiates and then with the vaping and everything, it's like we're going to lose a gen, at least one generation of, of kids just of, of people. And uh, I saw I, I saw on uh, some other brochure how the um, the lifespan of people is going down a little bit based on all this that's going on. So um, it, I think it's a big concern, and the more we can get involved, and the more uh, interest we can take in it. They also have been doing a mini training series. Um, uh, this time it was on, um, what's that? Hmm. <laughs> I got so much stuff here. I guess, was this one on the opioids? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I found another one too. This one was on opioids. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, a quick little uh, brochure that tells you that the commonly prescribed opioids and what it does to you and uh, the signs of misuse or abuse um, about Narcan and then um, the signs of an overdose and how to respond. So uh, it's just a little mini training series and they do once a month. Hmm. And uh, I found something else on it too about what what every older adult needs to know because some of them are mm -hmm. taking a lot too. Yeah, here's a, this is the one that really bothered me was it on Escape the Vape. It, it shows different things that they can be using, but there's benzene, cadmium, and arsenic are in those e-cigarettes. Hmm. And this is a, a big problem. <clears throat> it isn't even cut by any tobacco. It's, it's straight there for you, you know, so. Uh, it's uh, not a very good, very good uh, scene. Is there anything else I should mention? The only thing I can think of is um, that PYDC will be holding a community event this Thursday, Thursday. at 6.30 in the Plymouth North High School Lecture Hall. So it'll be open. We advertise that out to the community at large. So an opportunity to hear more about PYDC, how to get involved as a community member. So okay. that'll happen on Thursday. Okay, any questions on that report? Okay, and now it's the building committee, Ms. Burgess. <laughs> okay. <Okay>. Secretary. <laughs> All this paper. Okay, um, so see the notes. They sat there this time with the new town hall. They're doing a punch list. Still having a lot of problems with the um, the lighting going off while you're in there, they seem to think if nobody's moving, they're all intently listening, that uh, <laughs> no, one's, no one's in the room. Um, there's some problems, too, with the heating in some of the rooms when, you, when you're having a meeting, too. I think they were freezing to death in the, in the old court that, when they had that meeting. Were you there? I wasn't. No. But they, they were really cold, and they were there a long time. And, um, but they're still working on punch lists. They're still going through it there. They've um, got the Great Hall projector now complete, the, the window um, air infiltration's all complete, security system. So they're, they're moving along, uh, flagpole lighting's done. So they're coming along with Town Hall. Plymouth South High School, uh, they said Gary Costin was working on the water leak. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> okay, that's good. And um, they, they were talking about uh, March 19th for the ball fields, but it's not looking too good for that with the snow. <laughs> I think things are a little bit held up. And, but anyway, with the, with the leak and all, there was, it needed con caulking. Yeah. Maybe you can just talk to it better. No, I think they're just, um, they're very committed to working on it. I know at the recent trailer meeting, they're very 
you know. I mean, got been, out on social media like it was a big thing, and that the, yep. you know the new school was falling down or something. But yeah. uh, actually, um, the contractors still there and working, and so was the uh, on, owner's project manager. Uh, it's all under, it's all covered under the contract. Everything's being fixed, so They've it's been good. There every day it's and, not going to yeah. be. A, it's not such not a big problem. Uh, Russell Street parking deck. Um, they're moving along on that. Uh, they expect it to be completed in November or December once it begins. Um, notes on the North Plymouth Fire Station. Here it is. I have all kinds of stuff on the North Plymouth Fire Station, but if anybody's interested. But anyway, they're, uh, they're reviewing it. They're going over there to move the property a little bit. Um, and, uh, but construction, did that say when it's going to begin? No, it's only a proposed design. So somebody was there talking to us about it, but it'll be coming forward, more information on it. They're working. They're working on it. They're going to town meeting, though, for uh, 75, uh, seven, seven and a half million dollars for the building. So I do know that. Um, PG, DC um, on parking, uh, Main Street Garage. They've got Desmond Parking Consultants working on it. 178 parking spaces, and that's downtown where, uh, well, the old IGA, you know, but near Brewster Garden in that area, that little, that lot that goes between Market Street and, uh, and Main Street Extension. Um, so they're busy working on that garage. Um, they're talking now about whether it's going to be two and a half or three levels. And um, maritime facilities, they said there's an attached. <laughs> there's so much stuff this time. I don't see it. But anyway, the maritime um, facility, too, they're, they're working on quite readily. The, uh, they're going to put the salt shed out to bid. Um, um, on Lincoln Street, special town meeting has a thing on it to sell the building, to approve to sell the building. And uh, they're also going for $1.1 million to replace the library roof in Chillers. And... Um, then they found out that it was in the stucco walls and not just the roof, so they need another 900000 So they need an OPM, and the building committee will have it as a project now. So the library thing got a little bigger than they thought. Is there anything you want to add? Okay, thank you for that report. No, that's good. Um, and uh, I, I actually uh, inadvertently skipped over uh, reports and proposals from committee members, so let's just back up just uh, two, two right. points here. and. I am. Um, Miss Burgess. Yes, I came to the the opening of the um, planetarium, which was really, really, really interesting and, and nice. And um, I also attended uh, Plymouth Philharmonic to hear our children's choir, and they did four numbers at the end with the uh, Philharmonic. And it, this, they right. ended up with this little light of mine, and it was it was just very, very nice. Well it was. Yeah. Well so done. That's great. Right for me. Other reports and proposals, Miss Hunt. Um, like Dr. Maestas said, I, I thought I'd mention the MASC Division Three meeting that we had here last Thursday. Um, I, you know, like, like Dr. Maestas, Maestas said, the room was packed. We had school committee members, superintendents, law enforcement from Somerset to Weymouth. I mean, there were people from all over the place. We had Silver Lake was there. We had a couple of superintendents. A um, couple of chiefs of police. A couple of chiefs of police. Uh, we had one of our resource officers was there, which was great that he got to hear it. And uh, we, um, Mrs. Fry gave some great tours. I went on one of them with her of the school, and everyone was in, an, in awe of our school, which is kind of how we got that gig. I was bragging about the school one day at a meeting. Um, but And the food was great. They served us dinner. What was really good, there was a presentation by uh, at the SRO for King Philip Middle School, I believe, mm -hmm. um, who is a, a school resource officer who works part-time for the school, 
but she also got her teaching degree and she's kind of taken a, a different role um, where she develops curriculum, she actually teaches a class for the students, she teaches other SROs, um, and she had a lot of great ideas, a lot of, I mean, she's, she's a fabulous person to have in your school, and I did get a chance to talk to our school, our uh, resource officer for North afterwards, and, you know, there were a couple of hints and ideas she had, and one is that she does, uh, like, like coffee hours, like the principal coffee hours, where parents can come. Um, and we, we talked about that a little bit with our school resource officer, especially given the times right now. Um, maybe the parents want to hear from our resource officers and be reassured that the kids are well taken care of. And it also showed everyone that the school resource officers are more our resource, not officers. So they're there to you know help kids they are there to you know not just be an authority figure but be a friend be somebody that knows the community that the kids can go to if they have a traumatic situation or if there's something that they need help with so he also integrates into the like into sports mm -hmm. and things like that so everything, well. everything. Yeah. Yeah, everything so it, but it was a really great meeting and i'm glad that we we had a chance to do that um other than that, you know, I wanted to congratulate everybody. I, I got a chance to see Sweeney Todd. Um, and with all the sports events that we had going on this week, it was really nice to also hear, though, that Skills USA and DECA did so well. Because a lot of times we hear so much about the sports accolade, accolades that it was nice to hear some academic as well. And, it, and I think it was a pretty good balance this week. It's mm -hmm. been a pretty good week for Plymouth schools all the way around. So I just want to congratulate all the students that were involved in either of these uh, sports teams or the academic events. Other reports and proposals from committee members. Ms. Badger. I just want to echo what Ms. Hunt said. I mean, the Sweeney Todd was unbelievable. And I also had the opportunity, this is really loud, um, it had the opportunity to go to Our Town. I think that was two weeks ago. And it was amazing. They did a great job and just really showed what so you can well. do in a, in a different format that they haven't had the opportunity to use before. It was, it was fantastic. Um, and then to go to the planetarium, like Mrs. Burgess said, I mean, that's something that I just can't wait to like bring my little cousins to or just go to a show and learn something. I mean, it was just, it was such a, uh, it, it's, it's going to be such a resource for our community to just be able to have something like that that i mean it literally did feel like you were in the mugar in boston you you felt that whole like when they moved the camera down you're like oh geez am i on a ride but you know so it was really really impressive and then i just wanted to say that i was at the and i know gary went too but i was there in the morning for the spinathon at the y mm -hmm. and it was nice to see our students and just different community members coming out and supporting the y as well so it's going back and forth in, in both ways so that's it. Other reports and proposals. Just short, uh, short, a little bit tangential comment. Um, at the, uh, at the uh, uh, TD arena on s yesterday, the students were extremely well behaved. Mm -hmm. Big crowd, very big crowd as we heard, but uh, very, very appropriately uh, behaved, not only in the stands, but also walking around mm -hmm. uh, to the concession stands. And as you know, we also sent two teams to nationals, boys and girls, to nationals in New York. And they did, they did remarkably well as well. So uh, we're, we're uh, bringing down the accolades in, in many places. Yep. Well balanced. I'm sorry? Yes. Well balanced. Yeah, well yep. balanced. Okay. So, they even had that black box theater all sold out. You're lucky you got to see our town. I tried, but there's not doing I got well. special seats. Huh? I got special seats because I, <laughs> I couldn't fit in the stands with my leg. <laughs> 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 Like, sorry. <laughs> we have some personnel reports now. Yes, um, we have two coach and advisor appointments, two classified appointments, and three resignations report this week. Okay, thank you for that report. Accounts payable, please. Whereas school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transaction and trans transaction summary report Oops, hold on. for accounts payable warrant number S032218 dated March 22, 2018 mm -hmm. 
in the amount of $1,454,237.84 as presented. I don't know if that came out right. You got it. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Second. Seconded by Ms. Burgess. On a question on the warrant? Okay. We'll vote. Okay, that's a unanimous vote on the warrant. And we'll now do the minutes, February the 5th. What's the pleasure of the committee? Ms. Badger? I move that we um, approve the meeting, the minutes as presented. Seconded by Mrs. Hunt. Any questions on February the 5th? Ms. Hunt. That's why my hand was up. Um, it's just a small um, typo, but under committee reports, it says Ms. Hunt, few had dinner. So I don't know. I don't even know. Hold on, let me pull it up again. I wrote it in my notes, but let me just give you the exact mm -hmm. word. Um, what page? It's um, under committee reports. It's on page eight. Page eight, it says, Ms. Hunt had few dinner with artists from Plymouth. So it probably just had dinner with, take, yeah, but that's it. Okay, so we have a motion, we have one correction. Any other points on this motion? Okay, then, then we can vote for it. Who was the second? Uh, Ms. Burgess. Sorry. No, I think no, I second. I think I second. second. No, I, second. I had my, my hand up to make a comment, but you seconded me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, everybody voted in favor of February the 5th. Now it's time to discuss February the 26th. Ms. Hunt. I just want to make sure this isn't the executive committee. This is, no. um, I just, I had a quick, my site crash when I was writing my notes, but this is the, the meeting where we started the discussions about the walkouts, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think in the notes it said something like a discussion, and there aren't a lot of details in there, but I think one thing that I really would like to be in the minutes, and I know, um, Mr. Morgan brought it up first, but every single one of us, and I know when it was reported out, it didn't reflect that, but I think every single one of us, when we talked about it, mentioned that we wanted the students to be tolerant of other sides. Yes. And I think we're in the minutes, it talks about the walkout and all that. I think it should be noted that the entire committee had comments um, saying to be mindful of other people's opinions and to, to be tolerant and that, um, you know, that both sides would, might be represented. So I don't know if that's like rewriting it, but I just think where, it, I just think that's one kind of key piece that was missing in the comment that there was a discussion. I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but. That was in my notes too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have to have actual. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm getting nods, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. With that addition, do we have a motion? Ms. Badger. I move that we accept the minutes um, with edits. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Sally. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. We'll, we'll vote on uh, February the 26th. Wait a minute. Uh, I've got to get back. Back. Oh, there it is. And everybody voted in favor. And now we have the executive session minutes of the 26th. Ms. Hunt. I'll move that we approve the minutes as presented. Okay, is there a second? Second. Ms. Burgess is the second. Any questions on the executive session minutes? I don't see any hands, so we can vote for, for, for those minutes. Okay. We do have some uh, uh, obsolete materials, books specifically, Dr. Maestas? Yes, tonight we have a number of books from Plymouth South High School, and this is uh, part of the weeding process, and the, the books are categorized in one of four different areas. One would be a duplicate book, which is de designated by a D, outdated book, which is designated with an O, an extra copy, which is designated with an E, and poor condition designated as a P. And these books are um, really part of that process of trying to cull through the 
collection. And as some of you may know that the um, shelving at the old Plymouth South High School, they, they were pretty tall and grand shelves. And the new library, there's, the shelves are shorter and less books can be contained. So some of the duplicates are being taken out um, and weeded out. And what we do is um, those books are actually given to classrooms as first choice. So if a teacher would like an extra copy in the classroom, they're, they're distributed to the, to the classrooms. And we're looking at other opportunities, perhaps the Plymouth Public Library, to actually donate those to um, distribution throughout the town or even at the library themselves. So there are a number of books here tonight uh, that are, are being weeded out. And um, one of the things that um, you know, our library media specialist at South High School has done is really try to put this on the agenda to, to make that library as uh, finished and complete as possible. Mr. Morgan. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, disposal of obsolete books as recommended. Second. Is there a motion? There is a motion. Is there a second? Ms. Badger is the second on a question to that motion. Mr. Bailey. I'm just a little uncomfortable. I've brought this up in the past about the weeding out of the books and it just, I understand the reasoning for it and, and uh, it says that we're going to give them to big hearted books, but um, I hope we are checking first the public library and stuff because a lot of these history books uh, are perfectly fine. I mean, uh, Nathaniel Philbrick's um, Mayflower, I mean, that's got to be able to find a home somewhere. Mm. Um, it just seems like these books are, uh, are um, sh should be able to find a home somewhere in the district, um, especially when those history books are $370 a book. Um, yeah. And, some and of it's those American history. It's not like it changed. We're not getting rid of all of them. We're keeping some and then replacing them with some other books, but keeping some, the D for duplicates, so we have multiple copies. Right, but they're marked E for extra copies. Oh, the, the example you mentioned, I thought it was a D. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and the uh, extra copies. And it's just, I'm, I'm also concerned one of the examples was, for example, um, there were seven books about Harry Truman, and I removed the oldest two books. I hope we're using different criteria than just how old the book is because books about Harry Truman have been written by all sorts of authors, for example, and um, some of the better ones, biographies, were probably the mm -hmm. older ones. So, um, really. <laughs> so that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I'm just uncomfortable. I won't be voting for this tonight. Dr. Maestas? Mr. Begley, I will um, communicate with the English Department Chair. Um, coordinator to make sure that the process is reviewed to make sure that we exhaust all of our resources within the district to make sure those books are distributed within the district um, before they are um, before they leave the district to the library or any other venue but you bring up an interesting point which I think is something that we can uh, we can do I just feel we're going too fast with some of these we and I understand the size issues but mm -hmm. I'm glad you're taking it back uh, just maybe have people slow yep. down and take another look at it. Will do. Well, we have a motion now, um, and we're, on, we're getting some input on the motion that there will be another review of these books uh, by Dr. Maestas and uh, personnel. With that knowledge, does the committee feel comfortable voting for it? Um, the only thing that could happen now is if the maker of the motion withdraws. Who made the motion? I made the motion. Are you interested in withdrawing the motion? Um, I don't see the need to withdraw the okay. motion. So the motion is on the floor, and time for the vote then. The bo uh, can we repeat the motion, please? Um, the motion is to approve the disposal of obsolete books and instructional materials and take the necessary actions as recommended by okay. the administration. And we had a second on that. Who was the second to that? That was Ms. Badger? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll take the vote then. And it looks like uh, three people voted in favor of the motion and four people opposed it. The motion failed. Mm -hmm. uh, so this item will come back on another agenda uh, after the books are reviewed. 
Yes, that's what it, it appears. Absolutely. Okay. We'll get it on, on an agenda once it goes through the process that we've discussed tonight. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, we have the, these two items are a little awkward on this agenda here. We have, the, the, we have one more item to come before the committee, which is an executive session, and I'm going to speak to that in a moment, but I want to say that probably the way we're going to do this is we're going to take a motion on executive session, and I'm going to assume that the motion is going to pass. And then what I will tell the, the, uh, the viewing public that uh, we will be going into executive session. At the end of executive session, we will come back out in open session and the only thing that will happen at that moment is to adjourn the, me adjourn the meeting. We cannot adjourn the meeting and then go into executive session. I have to reverse them as the way they are on the agenda. But on the executive session, I want to ask the committee to consider another item. The, we're requesting executive session now to, this evening to, to discuss collective issues relative to collective bargaining. I have another issue that I want to bring up in executive session tonight regarding student safety. Uh, something brought to my attention that we need to discuss in executive session regarding student safety, and that is an item that we can put on our uh, executive session agenda without listing it on the actual agenda because it is student safety. So I would, I would entertain a motion for the committee for a motion to go into executive session for the two purposes stated. Ms. Bett. Ms. Mrs. Hunt. <laughs> Ms. Hunt. I move that the school committee go into executive session for the purpose of student safety and... Collective, collective bargaining. bargaining. Is there a second to that? Mr. Sally is the second on that. Are there any questions? Okay, we're going to take this on uh, a roll call vote. Mr. Sally to go in? Yes. Ms. Badger? Mr. Morgan? Yes. Mr. Hunt? Yes. Chair vote yes. Ms. Ms. Burgess? Yes. <laughs> what, what did I say? Mr. It's bad enough when you call me Mrs. Okay, uh, as I said before, we will go into executive session. At the end of executive session, we'll come back at an open session, and the only action that will occur at that time is to adjourn the meeting. So thank you very much. All right.